So allow us to jump straight into this conversation. I have a well-enabled panel with me this morning. Allow me to introduce them. Closer seated next to me is Janet Mule, who is a public health officer with the Ministry of Health. And next to Janet is Karanja Daniel. He's a menstrual hygiene management champion. And of course, next to him is Ivy Kimani, the brand manager for always. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Let me begin with the obvious question here and to also help our audience understand. And I'd love for Karanja to jump into this given that he is the champion of this and the only man in this panel, which, by the way, I highly recommend. Um, uh, what is menstrual hygiene management? When we say menstrual hygiene management, what do we mean by that? All right, thank you. So uh, menstrual health and menstrual hygiene management requires that women and girls mm -hmm. are able to access a menstrual management product that is clean, that, that can be able to absorb or rather collect mm -hmm. menstrual blood mm -hmm. and they are able to change this particular product in privacy over the period of time that they'll be menstruating right. while at the same time accessing clean water and soap to wash the body as required. Uh, this also uh, requires that they have a place to dispose the menstrual, uh, use menstrual product safely and hygienically. Essentially this means that uh, the knowledge to just uh, link uh, menstruation with the menstrual cycle and having to be able to manage menstruation with dignity, without fear, without shame, and you know, just having to experience menstruation without discomfort. Right, yeah. that's a perfect definition. And we'll jump into the infrastructure because I've heard you saying yeah. the, 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 the sort of environment, is there privacy yes. to do that? Is there clean water, yes. Are there, is there soap? So we'll come into the whole infrastructure aspect of it. Um, I would love to bring in Janet into this. Um, as a public health officer, where would you put the overview of, the Kenya, um, of menstrual health here in Kenya, menstrual health management or so? Uh, thank you very much and thank you for having us. Um, I would say as the government, the Ministry of Health, we've made uh, great strides in terms of uh, addressing menstrual hygiene management in Kenya. Uh, as we are talking, we have formulated a policy and a strategy uh, to give guidelines on how to address menstrual hygiene issues in the country both for uh, the, the line ministries, like the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Gender, and we also have a, a strategy to address, uh, to um, institutionalize or uh, implement uh, the policy document. We are also into partnerships. Actually, we have a, um, a partnership called Menstrual Hygiene uh, Management uh, uh, Technical Working Group. Uh, this particular technical working group works in line with the hygiene promotion technical working group. It's a bigger team that brings together members uh, of non-governmental organizations, uh, civil society organizations, religious organizations, and even uh, um, political leaders. Uh, we, o we also have uh, county first ladies who are involved in this uh, uh, particular platform that talks about the needs of women and how we can address the needs of women and girls when it comes to menstruation. Um, we also have a, a washing schools uh, manual, which deals with the infrastructure, which is, has been addressed by Karanja, uh, which ensures that uh, girls, menstruating girls, have access to water and sanitation and changing rooms when, th when they are menstruating in school. All right, Ivy, yeah. as the brand manager for always, where would you put us? How would you grade Kenya and its performance for menstrual health hygiene? So, um, as always, we have walked this journey for almost uh, for over 25 years, actually, in Kenya. And um, I must say that we have made amazing, great strides, especially with a lot of partnerships um, on ground. Um, um, just knowing that today about 35% of uh, the menstruating population is actually using sanitary pads, that's a great stride if you compare us even just to our neighboring countries, you know, Uganda or Tanzania. We've made really great strides in, in getting women to actually use disposable sanitary pads. And, um, you know, what we've actually done is we've ensured that women are getting uh, good quality sanitary pads. They're getting education in schools, as you know, as she, as, as Janet just referenced, right? That girls are actually getting good um, education on how to use pads, how to dispose of pads, and um, so the cut the the menstrual health um, the menstrual health um, landscape has 
has, has, has really grown over time. And as you can see, there's a lot of um, focus being done by the government to ensure a lot more girls are now getting, a lot more girls and women are moving from using traditional methods like tissue and cloth and sponge to starting to use um, pads. Uh, but is 35%, of course, compared to our neighbors, that is fantastic, but right. remove even the equation of neighbors. Mm. 35 is still quite low. If yes. we were to grade ourselves independently as a nation, yeah. yes, we've come from far, but in 2018, much more can be done to make sure that every woman and girl in urban and rural yes. still has, um, like what um, Kimani said, proper, or rather Karan just said, proper health facilities, cleaning and washing, and sanitary pads. So as much as, yes, we've made, compared to our neighbors, we've done a lot, independently as a nation, we can do more. Yes, correct. We can do more. And I think some of the um, biggest issues of, um, affecting women, especially um, on, on being able to use sanitary care, of course, is affordability at the basic level. Getting to be able to afford a sanitary pad at, um, at a price of 80 shillings, over time we've realized that this is not affordable to women. So, what, so after looking at this landscape and really trying to understand what can we do to ensure that this woman can save 10 to 15 shillings a week, so that in that entire month, she's able to buy a pack of pads at 50 Kenya shillings. So we then took a step back as a company and said we need to then provide her a good quality pad. So we then launched um, Always Cotton Soft just about a month and a half ago to be able to give access to a lot more women uh -huh. on good um, sanitary care. So this is the role that we are squarely playing uh -huh. to, get, to get a lot more women to buy, um, to, to be able to afford good quality sanitary care. And this is um, why, why this is so important to her. Outside of even girls in school, we know that without a good sanitary pad, she's um, being impacted on her work, on her productivity, not being able to be her best self on her period day yeah. versus how she would be on a non-period day. Right. So this is the role that we're really playing, playing to ensure that we make strides in getting this 65% to, 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 re, to, to increase the 35% of women that we're saying. Okay, yes. I'm hearing a lot of partnership between um, Janet and Ivy. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, do you feel that both the private as well as the public institutions can still do more and if so what as a champion what would you want to see both the private and public institutions do all right um sure there is a lot of partnership that i totally agree and this partnership is uh, demonstrated in the way the ministry is working with uh, the non-state actors uh, one of such partnerships is uh, through the kenya sanitation and hygiene improvement program by Ambre health africa and uh, menstrual hygiene management in itself, it's not a standalone issue. It really needs partners to come. I've mentioned about water. There are partners that deal specifically with water. Okay. So it requires that partners who are, who, whose niche is water to just come on board and ensure availability, affordability, and accessibility. Well, um, on also the partnership aspect, also the, you could, the ministry has also trained I am a product of a training uh, by the ministry, so the, the, the partnership is there. And uh, what needs to be done is, of course, uh, increase increase uh, the, the number of partners uh, so that uh, members of the public and uh, other other sectors can also be trained more on menstrual hygiene management. Okay, yes. so research by the menstrual health, a research done by menstrual health in um, Kenya reports, which is sponsored by both the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, says or shows that 30% of rural schools have a private place for girls to change. So it's one thing, Janet, to provide sanitary towels to girls and women. It's another thing if infrastructure, if water, if soap is then provided. How, why is it so important that also the government and private entities realize that it's just not dishing out sanitary towels, it's also saying that, hey, we're putting that infrastructure that would help girls and women be able to have their menstrual cycle peacefully? Sure. Now, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, actually, uh, as a government, we have given menstrual hygiene management a three-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. One of them is a safely managed uh, menstrual hygiene. Uh, this means that there should be the, the sanitary materials. In, uh, this includes pads, tampons, and the rest. And uh, we are also talking about reusable sanitary pads because, as she has said, uh, you, you know, the disposables might be a bit expensive for some of the people. But if they have to be reusable, uh, then we need water. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need water and we also need soap. Because when they are not adequately washed, then they can pose a health risk 
to the users. So we are talking about water, we are talking about soap, we are talking about uh, the infrastructure in terms of the rooms for changing. Because when girls come to school, we expect them to be in school, if it's a day school, uh, for the entire day. So they need to change maybe like four times in a day. Right. So they need changing rooms, and these rooms should provide privacy. Uh, the other aspect, the other uh, aspect on menstrual hygiene management is about disposal. Because if they are using disposable <coughs> pads, then they need bins to be able mm -hmm. to dispose the mm -hmm. bins mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in there. Uh, because uh, what has been found out, especially in the rural schools, is that uh, sanitary uh, pads mm -hmm. tend to fill the pit latrines very fast, mm -hmm. such that the cost of maintaining pit latrines is very expensive. And you find that uh, most schools are dotted with pit latrines because once they get filled up, then the school has to dig another one. As a public health officer on the ground, especially yeah. in rural areas, is this the case where you find infrastructure, where you find water, where you find proper um, play ways to, dis to dispose sanitary towels? Is that the case on the ground? No, that, that may not be the case on the ground. So that is what the strategy is addressing. We are targeting the stakeholders in, in health, um, uh, especially in schools, to be able to come up with ways of ensuring that there is infrastructure for both the disposal and also for changing of uh, sanitary materials right. for adolescent girls. Okay. Yeah, so I, I will say that is not uh, that is not the position. We are not a, at a hundred percent, but we are making so strides. So there's work that needs to be done at yeah. least, yes. especially for our rural girls and women. Yes. All right. A lot of work needs to be done and also education. We are talking about breaking the silence. There yes. are myths. I was even actually coming to that. Let's yeah. touch on that, Janet. Yeah. Fantastic, because yeah. you really yeah. wrote me into yeah. it. Okay. Demystifying um, menstrual health hygiene here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I want you to have a go at it already because you already started on that. How um, we as a society, because just this is not just a government job, because yeah every girl and woman gets their period. Yeah. So as a society, how can we begin to demystify some of these myths surrounding menstrual health hygiene? Basically, it's through education or information, yeah, which is also a constitutional right to give information. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, unfortunately, most people have associated menstruation with women and men have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to change this uh, because, of course, we know without menstruation, none of us would be around here. So we, we also want to loop men in so that we can uh, be able to break the silence. So as uh, Karanja has mentioned, we've done trainings across the counties. We have trained public health officers, we've trained uh, education officers, we've trained civil society organizations, and we have also trained county first ladies. Actually, the county first lady of um, Kwale, Her Excellency uh, Christine Mvuria, is our national champion. So we expect them to be able to cascade the trainings and to pass the information in their forums at, at county level. Karanja, as a man yeah. and as a champion, and the only man sitting on this panel for that matter, why is it important that also men play a role in demystifying or breaking the silence when it comes to menstrual hygiene, be it as a brother, as an older brother, be it as a father, etc.? Yeah, sure. Uh, it is important that uh, like she has mentioned, the three-pronged approach of breaking the silence, management, and disposal, uh -huh. that men come in uh, more emphasized on uh, the breaking the silence uh, prong. Why? Because uh, they have a role to play with uh, in the culture, in the cultural beliefs, uh, should I call it the taboos, cultural beliefs, mm -hmm. misconceptions, and myths around uh, menstruation, simply because we are living in a patriarchal society. Um, also, men have a role to play in providing spaces that have privacy. Um, I mentioned earlier on that uh, girls and women should be able to change their baths, uh, or rather the menstrual product, in environments that, are, uh, that provide privacy. They should also be able to, to, to uh, provide water, accessible water, affordable water, uh, soap. Uh, last but not least, psychosocial support. Uh, during menstruation, you can agree with me that, um, you know, there is uh, the, the, the emotional breakdown. Mm, there is the, the whole hormones imbalance. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know. So as a man, if you're able just to appreciate right. that, you know, during this time she's vulnerable, that is support. Mm. If you're able to provide uh, the, part, the money for the purchase, so yes. yeah, you know, that is financial support, right. you know. So, and uh, you're saying also, if you're an entrepreneur and, you know, you can come up with, uh, with, with uh, ideas, 
innovations around uh, menstruation, uh, the technology about disposal, you know, these are all avenues that uh, men and boys can be able to be part of menstrual hygiene management. Let me bring in Ivy as brand manager for Always. How mm -hmm. can we rope in men into the conversation more so, again, it's not a taboo topic because as Janet said, we're all here because of the cycle. Yes. So, I mean, so as, as always, what we have done is that we continuously, so we go to schools to talk to girls at the time at which they actually are just about to start their period. Right. Right. So especially, and part of the reason why we do this at this stage is because we know, and there's a lot of data that um, starts to say that there's a big drop in confidence when, when women actually just start their periods, mm. right? When they start puberty because mm. of all the changes that are happening to them. So we're sensitizing girls at this stage because this is the moment where you start to, to teach them that, you know, it's okay to have your period. All these changes are happening to you. So we get into classes, speak to this girl, and, and and what we also do, we then tend we then tend to train the teachers, and the trainers then are able to then talk to the boys and tell them yes, we are having a session with the girls. We're explaining to them about menstruation, what it means, um, what it means to you know um, to to be having physiological changes, what it means to dispose of pads, mm -hmm. and really just opening up the conversation in those classes in schools. Right. So right. You're but also saying let's let's grasp the boys as well when they're in primary. Correct, correct, because they need to learn, as the girls are actually starting their period, they also need to be cognizant that they're going through changes, but they need to be cognizant of what's happening to their sisters, what's happening to their, you know, to their sisters at home, to their, you know, mm. cousins, their aunties, their mothers. They need to be aware from a very young age. So we need to play a role starting at that age of 10 to 11. I love that because 50% research shows that 50% of girls discuss menstru uh, menstruation at home. 50%, I think, it's quite too small yes. and like you said um, if we are roping both the boy girl and the, uh, the boy child and the girl child in this conversation from as early as primary uh, we can be able to see more healthy conversation happen it's the sad thing is that especially in schools um, primary level when a girl messes herself, people tend to laugh at her, both the boys and the girls. And that shouldn't then be the case. And how we can solve that is by having boys roped into the conversation. Sure. Right. Yes. Right. Um, I, I, will, I will provoke your thoughts a little bit and uh, tell you that actually men and boys also look forward to menstruation. Yeah. How so? Um, you know, just picture this. Uh, when a girl tells the boy that I've lost my periods, mm -hmm. you know, what are the immediate thoughts that come to the boy? Pregnancy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah, we normally look for menstruation, but in silent tones, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So we know that there is menstruation, and we know that it's an important landmark uh, for, 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 for reproduction. So um, the, the conversation of bringing men and boys is, is just to empower them with information so that they are able to, to pass the correct information to the society and they are, uh, so that also they are part of the change that we really need in trying to demystify the myths and misconceptions around menstruation. Yes, and um, uh, also to mention something about um, the, 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 uh, the, the landmark or rather uh, the hallmark of uh, puberty in girls, menarche, um, that starts around uh, age 12, mm -hmm. uh, but anything between age 8 and 9 is normal. So we, we really need to come even before, mm -hmm. we really need to come even before a girl experiences her first right. menses, right. you know. So uh, what she's mentioned about school outreaches really do not target menstruating girls alone. Uh, the information also targets girls who have not uh, started menstruating, mm -hmm. but they are almost menstruating, so that they are able to, you know, uh, when, when it happens, they are not anxious, they, they know this is normal, mm -hmm. they can't be shy about it, mm -hmm. you know, they can take pride in it. Okay. Yes, so um, there is so much that goes into, uh, into it in terms of software and the information that we pass out there for both youth in schools and youth out of schools. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We're going to take a quick commercial break here on Morning Express and when we come back we'll come back with some of your feedback and allow me to just um, remind you of our Twitter poll question this morning. Um, in regards to our conversation here today we're asking you do you believe that menstrual health, has menstrual health in Kenya rather been given the importance that it deserves? Has menstrual health in Kenya been given the importance that it deserves? So tweet us at Michael G. Gitonga at Zinzi underscore K. The hashtag is Money Express and also include our Twitter handle at KTN News. When we come back, listen, there is something known as Menstrual Hygiene Day. Even I, as a woman, are concerned that I did not know that. So we're going to get to know more about those details and also get some of your feedback. So stay with us here on Money Express. We'll be right back.